Hello, in this video I'll show you how to get started with Pilot Blazor and what you need to do to create your first pilot using Pilot Blazor. Now I already opened Visual Studio 2022 and I can just start a new project. And since we want to, to create something with Blazor, we will select a Blazor WebAssembly app. And that's all we need to do. Then we can give it a good name. Oh, let's just stick here with the Dutu Ford name. And yeah, let's just say create it. There's nothing we need to do at this point in time. We just take the standard scaffolding as it is. Once Visual Studio has loaded the new project, what we can do is we modify the packages. So the first thing we should do is we remove the standard dev server, right? Um, and what we can do is we can just install from the official package source the Pyral Blazor dev server. So here it is. Let's just install the most recent version. And we also might want to grab some other packages. So the UTIS package that is very commonly used to reference common things like a service provider, for instance. That's an interface definition that can be found in there. And what you also will need is the PowerBlazer tools. So this package will actually have all the tooling to, for instance, scaffold um, the uh, JavaScript source of the pilot. Now, if all these things are there, it should look like this. You should have the PowerBlazer dev server, the PowerBlazer tools, the PowerBlazer utils all mentioned in here. But there are a couple of other things we might want to add. For instance, we are already developing for some app shell, so we want to actually um, define it in here. What we can do is we can just add a Pyrel instance field and say, for instance, hey, let's use the sample Pyrel app shell. But that is not the only thing that you can use. Actually, you can use anything. So if you already have an app shell, for instance, locally, you can just reference that. So in my case, for instance, what I did is um, I already created one. I think it's here in test this emulator. So test minus one, one. But what we get out here is a path like this, right? We could just copy that. And that should also work. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to remove this program CS. We don't need that any longer. But actually then um, Visual Studio will complain. It's you can't start the application. So you will need to add something again. Um, usually it makes sense to call that module. Um, the reason is that we look for something like that. And it doesn't need to, to contain anything, but what you definitely need to expose is a, is a, a static main function. But that is empty on purpose, so it's only there to tell uh, Visual Studio, hey, this thing can actually be run. But yeah, we don't actually run it. All right, so that being said, uh, you can try building it. You know, the first time it might take a little bit. Um, reason is that, uh, yeah, we first need to install all the npm packages. You can always monitor, of course, the progress. Great. Once this is completed, uh, you can actually check that the rebuild should take much less time. So it already progressed and here we go. So now what you can do, just press F5, start um, the application. All right. Great. So 
So what you should be able to see is that the Pyblazer dev server was started. You get a little bit of debug output and it's all there. But even more importantly, the application is also here. Now at this point in time, the application is rather simple because yeah, we didn't change the template, which means there is already one page registered, a counter page. So if you go there, you should see the counter. Uh, it's already working here. Um, and you can also check, of course, with Visual Studio that this is actually the counter page. So we can just make a breakpoint, for instance. And if we click here, we are here, right? And of course, we can just continue. So if you want to make changes, uh, then you can always save. And the hot module reload will actually uh, just inject that. And yeah, you can of course uh, get creative here, but you get the idea, right? You see already the check mark injected from Visual Studio and the browser refresh is working as it should. Great. Now, once you're done, just close it and everything is uh, solved at this point in time. And that's what you can do to actually uh, get along and yeah, develop a Blazor pilot. The only thing left is how to publish it, but that is what you can do via the command line uh, at this point in time. So what you would do is uh, you go ahead and um, you open, for instance, uh, the PowerShell. So you can, for instance, say hey, open in terminal. Uh, once we are here, we can uh, go to the Pyro folder and actually call npx uh, pilot publish and it would actually do everything um, as uh, outlined but yeah that's of course part of another video thanks for watching